Ladies and gentlemen, I have one golden rule on this channel. I will not, I will not, I will, will not make videos that are, that are going to start witch hunts against people. So what I'm not going to do is sit there and go, oh, this guy, look how toxic he is. And he's so bad. And But you know what? I almost broke that rule today because I have had the worst experience of Overwatch competitive ever. Like, it has been so toxic over the weekend. I just don't even, like, this is insane. We've got to talk about this. So before I tell you what happened to me and, and how I think Blizzard can maybe do something about this, I want you guys to go into the comments below and tell me what's been happening to you. What's happened during your placement games, which don't matter, by the way, and what's happened after your, your games after placement. But before we get into today's video, guys, check this out. These are the limited edition unit lost rank doesn't matter t-shirts. The store is open now. There is a link in the description below which goes to the store, and there is also a link in the description which goes to a competition which you can win a shopping spree on the store. These t-shirts are awesome, guys. You've got to love it. Of course, I'm Salos as well, and this is unit lost, ladies and gentlemen. So yeah, let me tell you about mine. So placement game wise, I did 20 placement games over the weekend. Um, I did them on my highest rated account from last season and my lowest rated account from last season. And honestly, there was no difference, to be honest, in terms of the quality of the games or the quality of the players. And the games after those felt very random. So once I'd done the placement games, it still felt like I'm getting games which are horrifically random. Now, of course, the reason for that is most likely because some people may have calibrated higher than they should have been, or maybe they've gone on like win streaks because you get a, a bit of boot boost SR after you've placed, right? So it will quickly calibrate you to a position where it thinks you need to be. So maybe some people have got to levels that they shouldn't be at or whatever, and that's causing them to sort of not play as well because they're out of their league. Who really knows? However, out of 20 placement games, I won 11 matches. On the highest rated account, it won six games and lost four. On the lowest rated account, it lost five games and won five games. So that's like, you know, that's pretty par for the course, right? That's, that's okay, that's fine. But you see this thing on the screen right now, ladies and gentlemen. I've seen this in uh, eight games. According to my notes, eight games. Out of 20 matches, I've seen eight games where there was a lever on my team. <laughs> Excuse me. So uh, what I would like to do is talk about this toxicity problem because toxicity, in my mind, is you being an idiot and shouting abuse to the Mercy main on your team because you don't like what she's doing you're an idiot if you do that, by the way. So toxic voice comms, toxic text chat as well, which is basically the same as voice comms. Um, just being toxic, I suppose. Uh, throwing the game, being a troll. Now those are, or just leaving the match, right? Those are not competitive mindset things that you should be doing as a player. Now... I guess I should just touch on that for a second, the competitive mindset, because this is something Blizzard really don't... Well, you know what? I'll get to that at the end of the video. Like, I'm really hyped, guys, because this is really disheartening to me because I just... I can't believe what's happened in these games that I've played. So let me just tell you what happened in, in one game which spring to mind. Uh, of course, I'm not going to show you any footage of this because, like I said, I don't want to start witch hunts or anything like that. So this was on Gibraltar, Watchpoint Gibraltar. We pushed the payload all the way to the end of the map. Well, nearly to the end. It was about 10 meters away from the end. So we'd just gone round the, the bend at the very end of the map. That's cool. That's a decent push. Then we're on defense and we're defending them, stopping them coming towards the final point, right? They've just come through the hangar doors and they're starting to push the payload up the ramp just before it gets around the bend. Um, our team, to be fair to us, we're actually doing quite well. We had a decent team comp and we're managing to hold them off. The problem is our Anna player constantly kept shouting abuse at the team to the point of I was like, can you calm down? Like, And then I, I had to mute this player and then I unmuted them because it was a bit silly me muting them because I needed their calls for um, nano boost because I was playing Soldier 76. So I unmuted them, which was a pretty bad move on my part because then this player got so abusive towards our diva player it was unbelievable it was like give me diva you're throwing the game diva in with, with more colorful language um and diva just didn't respond i don't know whether diva was in the voice chat or what and then anna left the game anna left the game um and the, the hilarious thing is we won the match right but it kind of takes away from the win like why was this person so aggressive so toxic when we were winning they wanted a hero that they well they, they weren't playing and then they left the game it makes no sense to me that's the one that really sticks out in my mind of course the other people leaving would just be explosions of toxicity so it's just like oh you guys are so bad the dps is terrible the healers are bad the tanks bad then they just leave the game which is completely ridiculous one thing i have noticed though is when i looked at the profiles of these players that were generally doing this right i'm not saying this is the case 
case all of the time, but they were players who hardly played competitive. I have played thousands of competitive games across all of my accounts. Um, all of the accounts have got hundreds and hundreds of individual games on them across loads of seasons of competitive. When I get put into a game at the start of a competitive season with somebody else who has only played like 10 or 15 games last season competitive, and luckily that may have placed them at like, I don't know, 3.7 or 3.8K, so they end up in placement games that I'm playing. Um, these players don't care. And this is what I want to get onto, right? This is, well, it's not fair me saying they don't care, but they're more inclined to just be like, oh, you know what, I'm just going to leave the game because I'm not going to play competitive ever again this season, so I don't care. But that causes a problem for everybody else on the team. So if you do do that, guys, don't do it. But this is the whole bigger issue for me. It's what competitive is. And it's not really communicated in the game, is it? Yeah, I know it tells you like, oh, welcome to the competitive season. Play competitive Overwatch, you know, try and win, blah, blah, blah. But it takes a different kind of player than it does from a quick play player and also a player that just plays in the arcade. Competitive is about trying to win. When I play competitive, I have my favorite characters that I like to play. You guys know I like Soldier, I like McCree, I like Tracer, I like Zarya. I'll play those over all of the other heroes, right? I've got the most playtime on Reinhardt. I will play Reinhardt if we need Reinhardt. I'll flex to other positions. But I feel that right now, when I'm doing this, I'm sort of shooting myself in the foot because the team are just arguing, 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 and then picking five DPS. And I'm like, guys, we need a healer or we need a tank. And then somebody goes, you sound like that YouTuber. And I'm like, uh... I, I, yeah, people say that to me a lot. <laughs> uh, but then we end up with really bad team comps. And like, it's just from the get go, we've almost lost the game. Sometimes you manage to pull it back, sometimes you don't. The other crazy thing which happens a lot is you're clearly winning the game. Like I said with Watchpoint Gibraltar, right? We were, well, we're not cl clearly winning that game. It was a hard fought game, but we did win in the end. But when you're winning the game, it seems really random, right? Suddenly, people will make crazy decisions and then they'll start changing their heroes that they're playing, even if that it's working right and you're rolling the enemy team there was a game on Ilios where the enemy had a um, pharmacy combo which is very common on Ilios because all of the points apart from ruins are really good for Farah. I mean ruins is okay for Farah, but it's not the greatest because you can't get that much damage in anyway on our team I'm playing soldier we had a zen so I'm on the voice chat and I'm like zen just discord Farah straight away and I'll kill her he does this straight away. So I'm well, and I'm burning the Pharah down. It's, you know, it's fairly easy to kill Pharah when she's got Discord on her. That's fine, she's dead, even with pharmacy healing going through. Um, and we, we took the point, 100 to 0, so pretty good result. The next point we go to is uh, Lighthouse, and uh, Zen just changes to Lucio. And I said on the voice chat, why have you changed to Lucio? He said, because Zen's not working. And I'm like, um, Zen was working. And he's like, who are you to tell me what to do? And I'm like, um, I'm not telling you what to do my friend i'm just saying that zen was working better f you and then uh the guy stopped talking so I, I guess he muted me or well he stopped responding back to me i mean i don't get it like i don't get it i'm like what anyway there's been loads of issues like this which have been happening i played a few games um this morning before i made this video because i generally wake up very early in the morning i don't think it's because i'm getting old uh, and in those games it was really bad again i think what happens is there is this compound issue of players getting so pumped up for their placement games and they're not doing very well then when they go into the actual competitive games or maybe not doing that well but like you know maybe they they're really trying and things happen in overwatch that you can't predict right so yeah maybe you do get a lever on your team or maybe the enemy team just outplays you or whatever right you just got to forget about it and carry on but i think people really take that to heart and then of course the problem with that is when they go into their competitive games they're really hyped then and they're hyped to the point of like they're, they're just going to do whatever they want they don't care about the team they're going to play genji because genji is what got them to their season high last season so whatever we're just going to do it and, it and it creates this whole atmosphere which i really don't like when i play this game i want to be nice to people i want to be guys let's let's play as a team let's work things out and i just have had no opportunity to do that and in some games okay that some games have been okay um and the team have been fine and everybody's worked together and it's been great but the majority of them haven't um 18 of the games of the placement games i played had some sort of toxic element according to my stats that's 18 games. So two games went through, which were just fine. But 18 other games had either toxic language, toxic voice comms, people leaving the game. I, I just, it's crazy. So what can Blizzard do to fix this? This is the next part of the video we need to get into because how do you fix this? What do you do? I think I kind of alluded to earlier on in this video, the idea of maybe a competitive queue, which puts people in who have played a certain number of competitive games together and really doesn't include their 
SR or their MMR or whatever the system claims it to be. Because I'm going to tell you right now, if you play this game for 50 games and get yourself to Masters, right, you are not as good as a Master player who has played this game for 3,000 games, most likely, right? You, you might be mechanically, but just the way you play the game, you're probably not as good, right? So should those players be put together? Now, at the start of the season, you get a lot of this going on. Like I said, I've seen a lot of this going on on the profiles that I was looking at. Because what I do when I join into a game, I'll pick my hero, then I'll start looking at the profiles of the players on my team to see what heroes they play. Because if I've locked in as a McCree, and there's a McCree main, well, I'll give them McCree, then I'll play something else, because I'm comfortable on about five or six different characters. So that's cool for me. Um, but I'd notice that there would be players with absolutely minimal games from last season, or maybe they played in competitive season one, didn't even play in two and three, and then they've played a few games in four, and now suddenly they're here in this game in season five. Now, there is also the other element to this argument going like, well, Stai, if their MMR is as good as yours, then they should be in the same placement games as you, which is fine. The problem is, though, that Overwatch is heavily based on experience, understanding team compositions, understanding what to do on certain maps, and just being a nice player. And I think a lot of that comes from experience with the game, where players that don't have as much experience can suffer with that, which may possibly cause them to just go crazy. Also, competitive is an investment, right? If you play competitive, you're there for the long term. Now, my view on competitive is if we're losing a game and it's a massive defeat, it's fine. Just go into the next game. Forget about what happened. And I can do that. You know, honestly, hand over heart, I can do that. But when it keeps happening game after game after game, it becomes very, very disheartening. And even I am like, OK, I'm going into the next game and I can feel myself getting frustrated. You know, I might start banging my desk or something going, like, oh, for God's sake, what's going on? Like, this is so, this is, what, what is going on? And that irritates me. Then that stops me playing the game. So surely Blizzard need to do something to stop that affecting players who play the game, you know, so they don't want to play the game because that's what is counterintuitive. So, like I said, maybe some sort of queue where there's more sort of, if you've done a certain number of games, maybe you get put together. I'm not sure if that's a great idea, though, because of the way Overwatch is designed. The matchmaker is dynamic. What it does is it puts you together. Um, it's designed to minimize queue time and it will put you with players who are in groups, who are not in groups. It'll try and match. It's got loads of different variables and that's how it works. And that's kind of OK. But it is very frustrating to me because I can understand in some cases how people can feel let down by the game. My lowest rated account, it placed just under Masters, which I was quite surprised because it ended the season at like 3. Hang on, what? Actually, no, no. Uh, I think it ended the season at 3.7. So for it to place into Diamond uh, maybe wasn't too bad because of the, the quantity of games it lost. It, it lost five and won five. Um, but the games that I've been playing have been really bad. Like, and it's putting me with master players. Like, I'll be the only diamond with a load of master players. And they start getting quite, like, what's this diamond doing on the team? And I'm like, guys, just placement. Don't worry about it. And then they start getting abusive towards me. And that's not great. Like, and again, that's a whole other thing. Don't attack people for their placement results or wherever they end. Because let's be honest, right? It doesn't matter. I know that I, I can play soldier at quite a high level. So I can easily get out of the... Out of the uh, the pit, so to speak. But the problem is, the pit is so sticky, and it draws everybody in, and it makes this. Oh, guys, I could just ramble all day about this. It it really makes me sad when people are toxic. I don't want you guys to be toxic when you play the game. I've made loads of videos talking about toxic behaviour and how to deal with it. What I want you to do is just do this, guys. If somebody on your team is being aggressive, being offensive, mute them straight away. Just mute and block them. Do not engage with them. Do not speak to them. Do not try and work with them because if they just want to do that, then that's what they want to do. Yes, you'll probably lose the game, which is not great. Then if you go into the next game and it happens again, you've got to try and stay strong. I know it's okay me saying, look guys, if you're on a massive losing streak, stop playing Overwatch. But most people play Overwatch when they come home from work or from school or at the weekend. They can't just play it like me at any time they desire. So you can take a few hours off then come back to it. So I understand. It is a highly complicated issue. Guys, I want you to let me know about all of this in the comments below. Make sure you give me your story for the way your competitive games have gone so far. Because, well, I think we need to make competitive great again, but we need to come up with some good ideas for this. Like, how can we make this great again? And you have got to let me know about this in the comments below, guys, because... I don't know, I'm a bit of a, I'm at a bit of a loose end. I mean, I wanted to make this video just to sort of cover the issue and acknowledge that it's there because it's just, it's so bad. Like, I've not seen anything like this. Yeah, there have been moments of toxicity with Overwatch and I've played games or had like five or six games which have been pretty bad, but not that number of games with that number of levers and that number of trolls. Holy hell, guys. Mm. Anyway, I've been Stylos from This Is Unit Lost and uh, I'm off to go and play more competitive, so maybe it'll get better in time. <laughs> um, if you like the video, then like the video. Subscribe to the channel. You can follow me on Twitter, which is at Unit Lost Game. 
gaming. And uh, yeah, join the Discord, guys, and discuss this in the Discord as well, which is discord.gg forward slash unit lost. And I'll catch you on the next one, guys. Toodaloo.